How are we feeling tonight? Man, unfortunately, this is my last night speaking with you all. <laughs> uh, but it's not our last night together, amen? Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed my time here with you all. Thank you to the leadership inviting me out. This has been amazing. Uh, you guys are a great group. I don't care what anybody says. You're awesome, all right? Uh, this has been an absolute joy and privilege, all right? So uh, the, the book of Romans is where we have been this whole week, talking about the one you love. I, I hope you've enjoyed this so far. I, I hope you've got something. I hope that y your eyes have been opened a little bit to what this book is all about. Um, hopefully it's been good for you. We've talked about God's love the night, uh, night one in order to be the one that you love. It starts with him. Night two, we talked about living by the spirit and not according to your own will. And then last night we talked about having the proper zeal. We are going to be in chapter 11 tonight. We're titling this thing when uh, there is a remnant. And I'll explain that in a second. Let me quickly say something about tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be uh, awesome and amazing for a lot of you. Simply because you're making that decision to get baptized. I mean, let me quickly say something about baptism because some of y'all are like, dude, what's the point? Why do we do it? Here's the simplest answer. All right. Here's why we get baptized. You ready? Because Jesus said to do it. Plain and simple. He said, do it. So we do it. Remember, like I said the other night, we live like Christ, not like Adam. Christ got baptized. All right. He said. Go get baptized. That's why we do it. Understand, it's not the water that saves you. It's God's grace, all right? It's just water, <laughs> all right? It's the symbolism behind it. It's the fact that you are going down one way, you're dying to yourself, you're dying to your flesh, and you're coming up a new woman, new man, amen? amen. That's why we do it, all right? So if, if, if you're wanting to do this thing, we'll be all ready to go tomorrow. All right. That choice is up to you. But I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Again, we're in chapter 11 tonight. Understand chapters 9, 10 and 11 dealt with Israel's past. It dealt with their present present condition and their future. The, the, the past and present were chapters 9 and 10. Chapter 11 deals with the future plans of God. Paul begins this chapter asking a very similar question from chapter 9. Has God rejected his people? Now remember, Israel is God's chosen people. There is no argument behind that. They were marked. They were set apart to be an example for the rest of the world. But again, they rejected Jesus as the Messiah. The Israelites expected that when the Messiah, when the Messiah would show up, he would deliver them from, the, from oppression from all the other nations and put them on top. And since that didn't happen while Jesus was walking the earth, since it didn't happen at his death, his burial, or his resurrection, two things were in the mind of the Israelites. Jesus is not the promised Messiah, or God is a liar. Either way, God can't be trusted. That's what was running through the minds of the people. So, has God rejected his people? Of course, that's going to be the kind of question that's on their lips. And Paul with a firm, like, <laughs> hesitancy, he's like, nope. And he says, no, because he's been gracious to me, and I'm, I'm an Israelite. Matter of fact, I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. So, no, God has not rejected his people. He then mentions a guy by the name of Elijah. He's from the book of 1 Kings. And how people who remain faithful to God, a remnant, people who remain faithful to God often feel alone. They often feel isolated. Sometimes they feel detached and separated from others. Have any of you ever felt that way in your walk with the Lord? Have you ever felt like you are alone in your walk, like no one understands what you're feeling? No, no one is understanding what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish. Good news. You're not alone in feeling that way. We just saw, right? 
Some of you may actually be hesitant in starting a relationship with God because you know you're going to be alone in this. You know your family is like no one in your family has a grid for Jesus or church. You're here at camp because you just didn't want to be at home by yourself. You don't even know the names of the youth leaders that brought you. You were just like, sign the slip, I'm out. That's all right. You're here. <laughs> it's all good. Here's the thing, same thing. You're not alone in this. You're not alone in how you feel. But you also don't need to stay feeling that way. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because there is what Paul calls in this chapter a remnant of faithful followers. Remnant means a small particle, a small part remaining, a scrap, a shred, or a fragment. God isn't done with his, he's not done with his people. He's not done with Israel, and he's definitely not done with us, us Gentiles. And all you have to do is look at history to get a better understanding of this. Because back in the book of Isaiah, God speaks through this prophet Isaiah saying this, Isaiah 11, 11. It says, in that day, the Lord will reach out his hand a second time to bring back the remnant of his people. Those who remain in Assyria, northern Egypt, and southern Egypt, Ethiopia, Elam, Babylonia, Hamath, and all the distant coastlands. What in the world is this dude talking about? He's basically prophesying to the people, and guess what? This prophecy was fulfilled May 14, 1948, when the United Nations establishes Israel as its own nation. So this right here should be a reminder for us, us Gentiles, that in the midst of a nation that's wilding out, in the midst of chaos all around us, in the midst of, of, of people falling into idol worship, sexual perversion, wars, chaos, mocking and rejecting God, in the middle of all of that, look at Romans 11.5. It says, in this, it is the same today for a remnant a few of the people of Israel have remained faithful because of God's grace, his undeserved kindness in choosing them. There is a small piece of people that remain faithful to God. There is a remnant. Are you included in that remnant? Are you yourself included in this? And guess what? Remained faithful because of God's grace. So in other words, I need him. I need the Holy Spirit in order to remain faithful to him. This is the how. Why? Because I don't want to witness or experience the alternative. Look at verse 7. It says, but the hearts of the rest. So God has this remnant of faithful people, but the heart of the rest were hardened. As the scriptures say, God has put them into a deep sleep. To this day he has shut their eyes so that they do not see and closed ears that they do not hear. Hardened hearts, blind eyes, closed ears. I don't want that. I don't know about you, but I don't want that. A heart that's full of opposition and resistance toward the things of God. Eyes that are blind to the love and work that he's doing. And ears that are shut off to the truth. I do not want that, and hopefully you don't want that. So here's the question. Where's your heart? Are you seeing things clearly? And are you truly hearing from the Lord? Where's your heart? Are you seeing things clearly? And are you truly hearing from the Lord? There's a story back in the Old Testament about a king of Judah. It's one of the 12 tribes of Israel. He's the perfect example of what we're talking about. Manasseh is his name. His story is found in 2 Kings chapter 21 and then over in 2 Chronicles chapter 33. This dude is 12 years old when he takes the throne. Imagine that. That's like my son who's 11 next year becoming president of, U of the United States. That's like pizza and hot dogs being the national meal. Like, I don't want to picture my son, he would like make a national holiday surrounded by Fortnite. Like, I don't want to picture a 12 year old as commander in chief but that's what happens. This dude is 12 when he takes the throne. And guess what? He rules for 55 years. Longest reigning king in the Bible is, is this dude Manasseh. 55 years. 
He's the longest reigning king that we can read about. But the flip side is that he is arguably the most wicked king ever. And he rules for 55 years. He reverses everything that his father Hezekiah establishes in honoring the Lord God. He rebuilds shrines of false gods that his father tore down. He built altars to Baal. We talked about Baal the other night. He builds poles to this goddess named Asheroth. She's the goddess of fertility. He's bowing and worshiping constellations and stars. He's, he's making child sacrifices, including his own sons. He sacrifices his own sons to a false god. He's consulting with psychics, witches, mediums. He even constructs an idol figure in the very temple, temple that King Solomon built, where God says these words. God says, my name, will be, my name will be honored forever in this temple if my people are careful to obey my standards. This dude is like off his rocker. Look at 2 Chronicles 33, 9 and 10. It says, but Manasseh led the people of Judah and Jerusalem to do even more evil than the pagan nations that the Lord had destroyed when the people of Israel entered into the land. He's talking about the Canaanites. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, catch this, but they ignored all his warnings. Where's your heart? Are you seeing things clearly? And are you truly hearing from the Lord? Because Manasseh wasn't. <laughs> Manasseh's heart is full of opposition. His, his eyes weren't only just blind to the work of the Lord. He's not even trying to recognize the standard that his father set. He's not even trying. And his ears were shut off to the very words that the prophets were trying to bring to him. He's not hearing nothing. So much rebellion, so much like disrespect unto the Lord, so much that he leads his people down the same path of dishonor and destruction. A whole nation is like suffering from his actions. And because of that, for some time, not forever, but for some time, he has to deal with the punishment and consequences of not honoring God. The scriptures say God allows this wicked king to, to reign for 55 years. He allows Judah to be taken captive by the Assyrians. He, he allows the defeat. He allows the exile being led away in chains. Manasseh goes from king to prisoner in an instant. All because of the dishonor and the disrespect. But look at verse 12. 2 Chronicles 33, 12. But while in deep distress... Manasseh sought the Lord and his God and sincerely humbled himself before the Lord, before the God of his ancestors. And when he prayed, the Lord listened to him and was moved by his request. So the Lord brought Manasseh back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh finally realized that the Lord alone is God. So how do we position ourselves to be a part of this remnant? We do exactly what King Manasseh did. We move from having a heart of stone to a heart of repentance. We go from blind eyes to clear sight of God. This is, this is where the humbleness kicks in. We got to humble ourselves and just like, I'm, I'm seeing things wrong. And we go from deaf ears to yearning to hear the voice of God. We, we should be, there should be a true desire in our hearts to hear from God. Make sure you're a part of the remnant because it's not too late. Make sure that you are a part of this. And you continue on in Romans 11, verses 11 through 24. It deals with this very thing that I'm trying to say. Though the people have fallen, they can still get back up. There's, there's still hope for them. You are not so far gone that, you're, that you can't be a part of God's redemption story. You are not so far gone that you're past the point of redemption. That's not the case. In fact, catch this. Israel's rejection, this is what Romans 11 says, Israel's rejection of Christ would lead to the salvation for the rest of the world. It's like, what? How in the world does that happen? Nation of people, a group of people reject Christ as the Messiah, yet it leads the rest of the world to salvation. 
This is like me in my teenage years just wilding out, which I was. I, I'm, I'm doing whatever it is that I'm doing. And all of a sudden, years later, I just, this is how old I am, I just really went to my 25-year high school reunion. Say something, what? <laughs> Here, here's the thing. Half the folks in that room I, I did dirt with. And it's the whole catch-up game. What are you doing? How many kids you got? Oh, my God, let me see pictures. Wow. It's all of that, right? And then it comes to the, well, dude, what are you doing now? I planted a church in Ferguson. <laughs> you did what? <laughs> yeah, man, planted a church in Ferguson back in September. Things are going, well, hold on, hold on. You planted a what? That was my conversations the whole night. Why, why am I saying this? Because I did dirt with these folks. And they're hearing now about what I'm doing. And guess what? By the end of the night, a handful of them were like, hey, man, what time are services on Sunday? Here, here's the thing. I'm mentioning this because we don't know what kind of work God is doing behind the scenes. You don't, you don't know what God is doing in the lives of people. We don't know the full work, but here's what we do know. God's grace is for everybody. God's grace is for everyone. Nobody is, is exempt from this. Remember the, the story in Genesis where all of this takes place of, of covenant and promise with Abraham? What does God tell Abraham? All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Not just some, all. That's Genesis 12, 3. Not some, all. Salvation wasn't just meant for Israel. God's plan included Gentiles too. That's us. It was just to begin with Israel and then to just transfer out to the rest of the world. So I, I read this chapter in Romans. We read this story about King Manasseh and his like terrible lifestyle against God. We keep reading over and over again in Old Testament scripture. Israel gets it right. Israel blows it again. Israel gets it right. Israel blows it again. And I, and I think to myself, dude, why? God, why do you keep putting up with these people? Ain't you sick of them yet? And then I got to examine my own life. I'm like, Ugh. I got it right last week, but shoot, I blew it earlier today. God, why do you keep putting up with me? Why, why do you keep calling? Why do you keep showing me mercy? Why do you keep showing me grace? Look at verse 22 of Romans 11. Notice how God is both kind and severe. He is severe toward those who disobeyed, but kind to you if you continue to trust in his kindness. But if you stop trusting, you will also be cut off. My, listen to me. My encouragement for every single one of us in here is to focus more on his kindness instead of his intolerance. He's a judge, yes. He, he, he's got some wrath that he can unleash at any moment. Yes, that's true. But he's also full of love, grace, and mercy. So much so that he put his son on a cross for us. If that's not love, I don't know what is. So my encouragement for you is to focus more on his kindness. Focus more on his love and kindness than his intolerance. Some of y'all have heard me say it, man. I, I, I got one son. I'm not ready to offer him up for nobody. I'm not that good a Christian yet. I'm, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> I, I'm not ready to offer my son up. That's what God did for us. Where's your heart? Are you seeing things clearly? And are you truly hearing from the Lord? You could be sitting here right now thinking that you've done too much. You've gone too far. You're too far removed. Man, you don't know where I was at last night and last week before we got here. I'm, I'm telling you, his love and kindness outweighs it all. There's going to be the day when you are finally face to face with your maker and you, he's, your mind's going to be blown in how much he loves you. You're not too far. Here's the thing, trusting in his kindness, what that, what that scripture read, 
but kind to you if you continue to trust in his kindness. What is the scripture saying? It, re it means for us to remain steadfast in our faith. This means for us to continue to trust our faith, remain dedicated. Is anyone in here like trail mix? I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of, of trail mix, especially trail mix with peanut butter. Oh, y'all oh y'all need prayer. Y'all like peanut where's Dustin at for mountain movers? Where's Dustin at? Dustin, where you at? Give it up for Dustin. Come up here real quick, dude. Me, me and Dusters are, are brothers from another mother because we share the same love for peanut butter. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to pick through this the best that you can for all the peanut butter pieces. I don't know what it is. But, but peanut butter is in there somewhere. I just need you to dig out the small pieces. Just set them there on the table. All right? It's not a hard job. Just pull out the peanut butter. Pull out the peanut butter. Bro, just like, it's like peanut butter chips in there somewhere. Yeah, there's one right there. Look. Yep, see? Bam. It's a piece right there. If you want, go for it. Here's the thing. The remnant that I'm talking about. Just go for it, bro. They're, they're in there. I promise you, it's in there. Do whatever you got to do to find them. Here's the thing. The remnant that I'm talking about is like these little bitty peanut butter chips that Dustin is looking for. And Dustin is that person that's like, man, I'm, I'm tired of being by myself. Don't eat them all, bro. Like, lay them on the table. Like, I got I to gotta see. I don't know. You're already feeling like you're alone. You're already feeling like, man, I can't get nobody to go with me to youth night. I can't get anybody to, like, chop up the scriptures with. Yeah, keep digging. See, that's what it's like. It's a nice little piece right there. Because here's the thing. No one wants to be alone, right? Everybody wants to be a part of something. We all need a crew. We all need a, need a circle of like-minded people but there are just so few other kinds of, of folks in your school. Lord knows there's a, oh, that's a good one. Lord knows that th there aren't any other guys on your baseball team that are following after Christ. Lord knows that there's no, there's, there's no cheerleading, there, there's nobody else on your cheerleading squad that's doing it. So you feel alone. And then a lot of times when you finally find them, Something happens. Life happens. That one friend that you've been like, yeah, we've been chopping it up with scripture. That one friend all of a sudden moves away because their dad has a promotion he's got to get to. So that remnant's gone. Then all of a sudden, another friend has, has just gotten a, a girlfriend and he's ain't, he ain't got no more time for you. So now that piece is gone. That's what happens, bro. The demands of life happens, and now you, you are feeling good and great, and all of a sudden, the, the remnant's getting smaller and smaller. You got to keep digging. You're like, God, I'm by myself. Why does this keep happening? I'm lonely. I can't get anybody to pray with me, but remain faithful. Keep digging, bro. Remain faithful. Remain steadfast. <laughs> Listen, everybody has these moments where you're, where you're like questioning your faith. Everybody has moments of like, man, why am I doing this? Why am I pursuing? Why am I praying? Why am I waking up early and reading my Bible? I'll be, can I be dead honest with you guys? Two years ago, I was ready to quit ministry. I was like, I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the way I'm being treated. I'm, I'm sick of the church hurt that I'm going through. I literally was like, I'm done. Called Mikey and everything. I'm like, bro, I'm out. He's like, what? I'm like, bro, I'm done. Mikey's like, eh, just remain faithful, bro. Remain faithful. Everybody has these times where you're questioning your faith. It's okay. Just remain faithful. Remain faithful. It's okay. Here's the deal.
I say all the time, it is okay to wrestle with these things. It's okay to wrestle with how long you should be praying. How should I be praying? It's okay to wrestle with scriptures, something that you've read earlier. It's okay to wrestle with it. Go for it. Because if you don't wrestle with it, you'll never own it. Wrestle with it. Go to God with this. God, I don't understand this. This isn't making any sense. I promise you, he's faithful to answer. Stay faithful. Stay the course. Where, bro, where's your remnant at? There's no more? No more chicken. <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes. God, there's, there's no one left. Here's the thing, guys. Listen to me. Just like God restored Manasseh to the remnant thousands of years ago in the Old Testament, he's doing the same thing with us today through the work of Jesus Christ. Look at Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. For God's gifts... And his call can never be withdrawn. I call our worship team back up. For God's gift, yeah, and his call can never be withdrawn. Thanks, bro. Give it up for Dustin. God's gifts and his call can never be withdrawn. Listen to me. God's gift of salvation through Jesus Christ can never be withdrawn. God's call for Israel cannot be withdrawn. God's call for you cannot be withdrawn. So why, why does he keep dealing with us? Why does he keep dealing with the Old Testament saints? Why does he keep dealing with us today and all of our mistakes and our flaws? Because it points back to love and grace. The reason he kept putting up with Israel in the Old Testament is because of love and grace. The reason he keeps putting up with you and me is because of love and grace. The reason he keeps calling out to you the reason he keeps calling out to me is because of love and grace. And guess what? It has nothing to do with what you can do. It has everything to do with who you are, a son, a daughter. That's it. Love and grace. If we remain faithful, he's faithful to remain with us. He's faithful to love us. He's faithful to keep us. He's faithful to restore us. He's faithful to uplift us and empower us. He's faithful to give us a new purpose and new meaning. Remember when I said you don't know what in the world God is doing behind the scenes? All of a sudden what felt and looked like you being by yourself, all of a sudden it, it turns into be an overload of other folks who are like-minded like you, who have been faithful to the Lord God, faithful to pray, faithful to go to church, faithful to call Jesus Lord and Savior, faithful to bring other friends to camp, Faithful to pray for mom and dad when it looks crazy at home. Other folks who are now part of the remnant, now the remnant is getting bigger and bigger. Now it gets easier. Now you've been empowered. Now you got confidence. Now you're like, Shh, I can do this thing. Satan, what's up? Let's go. You don't know what the Lord is doing behind the scenes. Stay faithful. I don't care what it looks like. Stay faithful. I know the enemy is throwing all that he can up against you. Stay faithful. Get it in your spirit. Stay faithful. Because this turns into community. This turns into confidence beyond this world. This turns into boldness. And this turns into less and less fearful. If God be for me, who can be against me? Stay faithful. Crows with this last piece of scripture, he be
Proverbs 3, 6. This is why we're saying to stay faithful. Because Christ was faithful as a son over his household. And we are that household if we hold on to our confidence and the hope in which we boast. Jesus was faithful to what was expected of him being the perfect sin sacrifice, not just for us, but the entire world. Jesus was faithful to that call. He's faithful to being buried in a tomb, faithful to resurrect and walk out of that tomb. So we need to stay faithful to him. Remain steadfast, remain faithful, remain faithful to God. Make sure you're a part of this remnant. Where's your heart? Are you seeing things clearly? And are you truly hearing from the Lord? Stand to your feet. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your sons and daughters in this place right now. God, I thank you that their hearts and minds are turned towards you like never before. Come on, lift your hands and just say, the Holy Spirit, help me. Come on, lift your voices. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to remain faithful. Help me to remain steadfast. In the, in the, in the, in the middle of opposition, I want to stay faithful. In the midst of heartache, I want to stay faithful. In the midst of doubting, I want to stay faithful. Holy Spirit, help me to remain faithful. us clean hearts let us see things clearly let us see people how you see people let us see our family members how you see our family members let us see things clearly and let us truly hear from you speak to us lead us help us in every single thing that we do holy spirit help us in jesus name Come on, let's worship.